Well, aloha, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Chicken Skin Moments with Pastor Dane. Today's teaching actually comes from the end of Sunday's sermon. We were talking about what I call proper care for your temple. We are the temple of God, and we are in a process of growing closer to God. And basically what I did was, after some sleepless nights of thinking about exactly what is our job in the ministry and in the church, and what are we trying to accomplish, and I really thought, you know, it boils down to five basic things. These are five things that every believer needs to be doing to, to care for their temple, but actually a better way to put that would be to grow and mature in Christ. And the first thing, and it might sound the simplest thing, is go to church. I know that sounds basic, but you'd be surprised. God tells us in his word that we need to go to church, and I'm going to say this. We should only go, we should only go, we only go for an hour and a half a week. It's not that much to be asked to do when you consider that God has forgiven us of every single sin and everything he's done for us along the way. An hour and a half to go to church. And it's so good for us, especially if we go to a church and maybe we don't like everybody. Sometimes we think, oh, I don't go because of this or that. Maybe that's the reason we're actually supposed to go. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine's kid is uh, attending church on, uh, excuse me, school on the mainland. And she came up with this great story she told me the other day. She said the pastor was telling a story where somebody came up to the pastor after church and said, you know, I didn't really care for the worship music today. And the pastor replied, well, you know, it wasn't for you, right? Now I want you to do the math and think about that. What is the purpose for going to church? Is it all about me and what's best for me? Or am I to go there because God tells me I should go there, and I go to serve other people there, and I go to be ministered to by God. And it's not about us in the end. Second point is, it's going to sound basic as well, but read your Bible. What I mean by that is, even if you're not a reader, you need to be feeding yourself all week long. And that could be either doing a quick morning devotional reading in the morning, attending Bible study, listening to podcasts about the Bible, um, or just reading the Bible yourself. But it's imperative that you get to know the truth from God. We live in a world where we are surrounded constantly by messages from uh, Instagram, um, Facebook, Netflix, uh, media, and it's, it's full of all kinds of phony information. The one thing we know we can count on is God's word to give us the truth, and that's what gives us the hope to live in a fallen world. The third thing sounds obvious, but prayer, oh, at least in the morning, at least once a day, you need to start your day in prayer. Just for fun, I timed the Lord's Prayer the other day. It took me 28 and a half seconds to say the Lord's Prayer. Let me encourage and challenge you to begin your day with the Lord's Prayer and start with the Lord's Prayer. And when you're done reciting the Lord's Prayer, maybe just stop and hang out a little bit with God. Maybe try to hear what he's saying. Talk to God about what else you have going on during the day. And then eventually you really need to work your place into a, a point of life where you sort of talk to God all day long. My friend Mike Wellman always said, keep short accounts with God. You're driving on the road, you see your friend pass by, you wave and you say, God, you know, I lift up my friend to you right now. Talk to God all day long. Number four, serve. I know again, that sounds really basic, but God says we have been created, we are his workmanship created to do work that he prepared in advance for us to do. Everybody has time, everybody has some talent, and everybody has some treasure. You might give in different parts of those areas, but you should be making sure that part of your life is dedicated to being used by God for his service. And by the way, one last little caveat on serving. It is really the best way to get to know everybody in your church is to sign up for you know, landscaping day or sign up to cut muffins in the kitchen, whatever it is, drive the junior high van. And by the way, you might not always like everybody you meet in the church, but that doesn't mean you should stop going. Maybe God wants you there for that reason specifically. Now, the last one is interesting because I thought, where should I put it, first or last? Um, and I think it has to go in the last place. And that is this, love God and love people. You see, some people might think, oh no, love is what enables you to do all those other things, but that's really a faulty understanding about love. That makes it sound like we begin with a basket of love, that God gives us this basket of love. Now use this love to go, you know, pray and to serve and to go to church. Use that love. It actually works the opposite way around. 
in doing those other four things, in the time that you go to church and that you serve and that you pray and that you read your Bible, it is those four things that will teach you how to love God and how to love people. So those are the five key things I believe that every believer needs to be actively engaged in for their spiritual growth, yeah? We need to go to church. We need to read our Bibles. We need to pray and talk to God. We need to serve in his kingdom. And we do all of those things with love. Hope you enjoyed today's chicken skin moment. Hope to see you back here again soon. Hey gang, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, tell your friends, uh, write your congressman, whatever you got to do. But thanks for watching the video. You're going to want to check out this next video as well. And other than that, we'll see you next time. God bless.